Hi, friends. Welcome back to Running Long, the podcast brought to you by Vert Run. I hope you're doing well, regardless where you're listening from, in the northern or in the southern hemisphere, and that you are enjoying some great runs on the trails, planning adventures, races, and trips to the mountains. Of course, I'm Francesco, as always, your host, and today I'm very excited and actually a little nervous because joining me today on the pod, we have the great Emily Fosberg, one of the greatest champions of our sport and inspiration for many, and for sure, one of the athletes I have mostly looked up to over the years. Emily should need, should need no introduction. She's one of the most decorated and successful trail runners of our generation. She is an entrepreneur. She is an outdoor lover, a climate activist, a mother, and much more. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. So here we go. Without further ado, the great Emily Fosber. Welcome to the pod, Emily. Thank you for the very nice introduction. <laughs> that was very kind of you. I'm very happy to be here and talking to you too. I, I really enjoy following you. And yeah, it's a, you're a really impressive runner. And I was so happy to, to see you finish the Golden Trail. Uh, how you did and then of course I'm very sorry for the injury but uh, you did a very good race there in the end. Thank you so much <laughs> it's uh, it's mm-hmm. uh, great for me to know that uh, you've been following my journey um, actually um, I would like to start uh, talking a little bit about uh, a cool story that uh, happened recently uh, because as many of you know I've been struggling with injuries and also my mental health related to my professional life as an athlete. So a few few weeks ago, I was sharing on social media about that. And the fact that despite, you know, like having having everything I need, having people uh, around me, really awesome people and having what people would consider a happy life. um, I've been feeling, you know, kind of unhappy and struggling with self-confidence and my purpose and what I feel deep inside. And you wrote a comment under that post on Instagram that said that uh, basically I, it's, it's always good to focus on the small things in life and they can be important and that everyone deserves to be happy. Um, and this really struck me because, you know, after all, who am I to deserve your attention? And like your words really resonated with me because I have actually thought a lot about them since that moment. And um, you really seem to be the best person to talk to about this. So um, first of all, thank you. And uh, I would like to ask you if you ever had moments of struggle in your career as an athlete, not much physically, but of course, mentally. And uh, what are some some of the little things that have helped you find your why? Uh, the meaning behind what you do because after all I think it's all about finding that drive to pursue something that we don't know we don't necessarily know what exactly is but I think we all feel it yeah I think this is a like it's something that we everyone experience and and get to work with and it's you can never like compare because uh, like starting to compare problems or or like you can never wear another one's backpack so I think it's for me it goes a long way back um I remember my really first um like low moments in life I was maybe 20 years or something and I was a really rough time for me of different reasons and um Luckily, then I had running. It was something that I really loved back then and still do. Um, and I was, that was like the only high, highlight of the day. And I managed to, yeah, just come by um, day by day with, with the running. Um, so, yeah, the relationship to running really grew uh, over those months. And I also had... Um, of course, different difficult moments um, when I struggled um, like mentally and like with the motivation and, and also when I 
had a rehab when I had an operation on my knee. I tore the ACL some years ago during a ski race, and that was my first big injury. But then I, I think I had been through many moments of like uh, having a hard time. So I, I kind of knew what to try to focus on. Um, and of course, like you can have really low moments and really low days, but I, I knew somewhere inside of me that, wow, I am very lucky to just see the sunrise. Huh? It's, uh, and to be able to like appreciate a sunrise or a sunset or appreciate to, to watch this flower come up in the spring and to, to be able to breathe fresh air. And I just really tried to be in the moment and see whatever it was that made me feel a little bit happy and then just try to really appreciate it because it is such a gift to to just be alive and it can really sound like a cliche and I know it I like uh yeah it can feel so hard uh, but I think a good step to to um, to get happier is to to really try to focus on the small things yeah thank you it really gave me a very cool perspective to to reflect on this issue and of course now i'm injured and it's maybe a low moment in my career after such a great moment it was for example winning the golden trail war series final but there is other reasons uh, to be happy in life and you should totally appreciate them thank you uh i still haven't asked you how you're doing uh we know that you just ended your ski mountaineering season at Pieramenta and you're now transitioning to trail running so how's that been how how is life in Bromstad yeah actually <laughs> life is really good at the moment but nice. it has um, like um, my our youngest Ilva Lee she's um, almost one year now and yeah. uh, before she was born I was really like thinking about should I stop competing trying uh, to come back and it was really interesting because I felt like I took some months of really contemplating it and and then one evening I just woke up and like no I want to give it a go I haven't I haven't given my best I haven't tried everything I want to try to come back even being a mom and as you said I I'm an entrepreneur and I do some other things. And I just said like, oh, I really want to prioritize the athlete in me. And since then I have been so motivated, but I have also been in the worst shape of my life. Not even like when I was young, I've been in worse shape. So it has been a really hard work to, <laughs> to be where I am now. And I'm not even close to, to being a, um, good shape but I'm I'm on the way going there and I just take it step by step and I really like I'm really enjoying the process and I have like I have really strong um women to train with here uh, so yeah. <laughs> really you know in some intervals in the beginning I was like I couldn't see them and now it's like uh, I'm, I'm there with them and I like pushing and it's uh, life is really good and I'm just so happy about enjoying the training and like the process and I'm feeling like I'm not stressed like maybe this summer will not be my best one but I have many more summers like I'm 35 I have so many friends that are like 40 that are crushing races so um, yeah I'm feeling I'm in a very good uh, uh, state in the life that's that's awesome to hear uh, it's it's amazing to you know, here's such a happiness from your voice and such a cheerful person for for whatever life is bringing to you. Uh, what, like, of course, is you, you've had a great career. You've accomplished so many things in your career as a professional athlete. You've won so many races. What does still motivates you to train? And what do you feel is missing uh, in your career as an athlete that is giving you this motivation actually it's the training part because mm -hmm. i've i've always taken training so like i just done it because i like yeah i've just gone out there and do what i'm feeling and now when i really have been needing to 
to work hard to be able to get in shape. I'm motivated to to see where I can go with a bit more structured training. So I, I changed a bit like how I look at training, even though I still, you know, I still love it. Like I still um, just love being out there exploring and doing long days in the mountains. Um, and I, yeah, I still love to have both seasons of schemo and running and uh, yeah. Um, but maybe I have become a bit more nerdy when it comes to training, which is really fun because I was like that maybe 12 years ago, 15 years ago as well. And then I just changed and now I'm back to back to the old one. So, so this is the influence of Killian, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe I was too, too fed up with that and then I took a break from it and now I'm like back. So it, now it's really fun to to talk training together and now i'm a bit more like now i can now i can um, ask him a lot of questions that i didn't <laughs> care too much about before and yeah it's, it's really fun cool yeah mm -hmm. nice so your first race is going to be zagama right yep training for that mm -hmm. cool yeah <laughs> and I would like to ask you so many questions, but uh, it's it's difficult to pick. Um, how is balancing training with everything else that you have in your life? Like, of course, being a mother and spending time with your daughters, uh, which is a you know a, a great part of your day, I think. And uh, then taking care of all the other projects that you have, and also you know bouncing back after after giving birth. Uh, You've been, you know, train. You've been sharing this journey, uh, even on social media, and uh, it's it's been it's been great to follow. Actually, it's been very inspiring. Uh, how is it combining all that to you? Um. Yeah, I, I have a like. I really like the different projects and um, different. Uh, things that I'm doing and like living on this small farm I love the work outside and I love the work with Moon Valley that is my brand and I you know I also I love and appreciate my sponsors and I'm I'm always like I have so many ideas that I would like to do with them so first of all is that that I just realized that I can't do as much as I could before uh, First, because I need to prioritize the training in a way I didn't need to before. And second, uh, the recovery. But of course, first of all, like it's the girls. Like um, I think every parent, they just, uh, that's like number one. You don't need mm -hmm. to say that it's number one. It's just there, of course. Um, so I realized that I can't do as much as I did before, uh, even though I'm, I'm And that that affects mostly my little farm, I must say, because that's <laughs> that's what I what have been not prioritizing. Like I still need to do the other things, and uh, the easiest thing to not prioritize is my little farm and my yeah my veggie garden and all the projects around here and everything that I I normally love to do. You know, I I could be out working five hours in the morning before uh, I had the girls on the farm and then I would start the day but I can't do that anymore <laughs> so uh, our little farm is suffering a little bit but it's okay it's um <laughs> when I'm retired I can I can work more on the farm <laughs> yeah I understand because I have a garden as well and uh, for example when I'm fully training the garden is always suffering the plants need water And I yeah, yeah, I really enjoy growing my vegetables, potatoes and zucchini, tomatoes and stuff, but it's a it's a lot of work to take good care of them. Yeah. That's cool. And I think it's it's always been a passion of you. Um, you know, living this farm life, um, the passion about cooking, um, nourishing food, um, the importance of a sustainable plant-based nutrition where does this come from and have you always had this passion um 
I don't think it has always been my passion, but um, like we have been living close to nature since I was a kid and my grandparents um, are, were farmers and, and also Laplanders. So I think the nature was always there for me. And then just when I was in high school, I really started to, to care about the environment and I decided to study like environmental health it's called in Swedish yeah, like sustainability so from an early age I had that um, interest in taking care of the nature and I think it came from uh, yeah, living close to nature and since then I have always been trying to somehow uh, even though when I was studying in Umeå and Tromsø which are cities um, I tried to to yeah, feel connected to nature more than just like running and climbing in the in the mountains. Yeah, cool. Um, a question that I've been wanting to ask you. Um, you've uh, you've been open about that on social media. Um, we see a lot of athletes struggling with their relationship with food, with nutrition, with body image, and so on. Um, probably because trail running is becoming more and more performance oriented and the equation skinnier equals stronger or faster seems the, ob the most obvious answer sometimes. Um, do you want to spend a few words on this topic? Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, I, um, it, it's, um, in a way it's, uh, it's a pity that it has become stigmatic. Do you say that like a stigma around it? Because yeah. I mean, if you were an athlete and you really had problems with like eating disorder, it would be really hard to be open about it if people around you were like talking shit about it and like putting, yeah, if you, if, if you know what I mean, if like, if everyone is like looking to some athletes and like, uh, that must be something like they must have problem or everything then it's like hard for those maybe to open up about it if it is like that but it's not always it's like that uh, I mean I think everyone is very in the, like we are all individuals and some some can be skinny and healthy and maybe some cannot be skinny and healthy and of course as you say like an athlete needs to be in a certain shape uh, but maybe it can also be for the race season or for a specific race and then like be open about it like yeah I'm trying to lose five kilos for this race and it's not the the most healthy weight but it's something that I prioritize for this race and like yeah I, I wish that maybe it was more like high roof <laughs> to talk about these kind of things and I I have um before maybe uh, when I was younger I was more like almost like angry at the the role model models that were really skinny like I was like oh, why do you do that to yourself and why do you do this for the sport like can't you be, just be a good role model but now I'm more like yeah uh, as I said before I just um everyone has their own backpack and um, I think it would just be good if if everyone could talk more without judging about it uh, if it needs to be because of course uh, there are problems yeah. uh, um, and, and it can turn out like really bad and uh, as, as then it's not so much studies about it as well it's like are you really, uh, is this really worth to, to be this unhealthy? If it is unhealthy, I mean, just to, to win a race, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting, but also tragic discussion and it can like go on forever um, because we don't know the effects about it. Like um, for some women, it, it seems to, to work fine, but for some women, it can take so many years to, to come back in a, healthy shape to to be able if they want to have kids and 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 also like the osteoporosis like the bones can be super fragile after and i think it just needs to be a, 
a lot more studies about it as well, which is also hard as it's only like 3% of studies in sport that are made on, on only women, which is tragic in itself. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, of course, it makes me sad if I see a young person say, oh, I, I want to, I want to lose 10 kilos to be like her because then I will win a race. So that makes me really sad. Like I, I rather hear like, oh, that woman looks so strong and she, she's so powerful and she can win a race. That's amazing. I want to be like her. That may, that would make me more happy. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a very big topic and not easy to, to talk about, but um I see a few athletes opening up about this and uh, hopefully it will become less stigmatized. And I think as professional athletes, we're always supposed to be in a certain way. Um, We have a kind of reputation that we're strong and we don't really have this type of weaknesses. So it's, it's been hard to, to open up on this topic and but there are people fortunately who are sharing good things and uh, I, re- I really appreciate reading their thoughts and their view on this uh, big topic that is affecting of course not just our, our sport um related to this um I, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of sharing your own story uh and inspiring people. Uh, and that of course is related to, to social media as well, because nowadays we have a platform, uh, we're almost constantly connected. Of course, we get to choose what we can, what we want to share and what we don't want. But uh, as athletes, we're also, I would say almost, uh, trying to promote ourselves and our personal brands so how's that how's that been for you um have you had have you ever had moments of struggle and what's your relationship with social media in general yeah this is also an interesting topic and like since um, since i was an unknown runner i i have really enjoyed sharing like uh, um small things from my life mostly from like runs and and beautiful mountains that I climbed or why hiked in or like a good recipe and I don't really know why because like I had a blog and maybe it was 20 person reading it I just maybe (laughs) as we talked about before maybe it was a reminder of like how good things can be in life even the smallest things and I was writing it down and yeah and just notice them and then I kind of stumbled into the trail running world this was never like a a big goal of mine to become a a trail runner or a ski mountaineer (laughs) I just did things that I loved and it was like it was turning out good so I that's the best approach (laughs) yeah I think I didn't like still it was only just you know me that I was sharing things and um, I think it's still me. Like I'm, I'm just sharing things and and thoughts and like, yeah. I feel like the same. Uh, like 15 years ago, Emily <laughs> just shared <laughs> everything more or less. So uh, cool. most of the times, I feel like that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, like when terrible things happen in the world, I can really feel like why am I here on social media writing a post about training or uh, whatever shit when I can do something else or you know when I get into this like why did I study biology and I didn't do anything with it Uh, like I could have (laughs) maybe done something better for the world (laughs) yeah so I am for sure I have doubts but then I I think also like sometimes you just need to lean back and believe that the world is you're you're on the right place and then I'm just like yeah maybe maybe this is what I'm made to do (laughs) and I don't know yeah I'm I'm trying maybe not to think too much about it 
uh, yeah. Even though it's interesting, because yeah, I, I have this. Uh, I, I have a very good friend that I'm training a lot with, Ida Nilsson, who's also yeah. a runner, and we 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 can often talk about like social media, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, talking too much about it. It's like what what world is it that we're living in? And like, who cares about my run and who cares about my coffee? <laughs> like, yeah, when you think about it, it's just like so strange. <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't really have an answer for the reason why we share some things on social media. And of course, some people are more open about it. You seem to be super natural in what you share and what you write and the perspective you give on your personal life. Um but I, I totally agree. Like if we ask ourselves, but why are we all really doing that? We don't really know the answer, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but maybe, maybe, maybe actually, if I think about it, as I, I said before, like um, maybe it's a good reminder also of like how good life can be. And mm -hmm. um, when you think about it, and then you also feel like, maybe if i share this struggle maybe another person can read it and feel that they are not alone and maybe they can see uh see their problem from another angle and like it can also be like feeling that maybe you can contribute to something good for someone else yeah i see it a lot in this way actually um mm -hmm. my you know personally i i tend to see social media as a tool to get in touch with people to stay updated with what happens in the world and of course mm -hmm. not just the trail running community but also to get inspired and to find information and resources that i think i wouldn't have the chance to discover in in other ways so in this for this reason i think that social media could be a, a great tool and probably a few years ago i was not really a lot into it but i've kind of understood not the importance, but it's somehow become natural to me. So, of course, uh, for example, someone like you has been a, a great inspiration for this reason and uh, a good model to, to kind of follow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, we've mentioned that besides being an athlete, you're a businesswoman and you founded Moon Valley Smart Farming with your friends and fellow athletes, Ida Nielsen and Mimi Kapka. Um, how, how was this project born and how do you plan to keep growing it? Yeah, oh, I love, uh, I love talking about Moon Valley. It's really my heart uh, project. Um, yeah, it happened like um, 2017, we came together on Les Campiers and Mimi just met a, a man from Sweden who had really good contacts um, and that made us think like maybe we can start our own energy brand because like um, yeah I wasn't really happy with um, with the ones that I had and I had just decided to to leave and 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 it has always been like a dream of me to start something new like I, I dreamt of having my own cafe as I was working as a baker for a while and both Mimi and Ida they they share the same values um, as me when it comes to nutrition and like good food and sustainability and seasonal and um, so yeah we started to to think about it and then one year later we we had three bars to start with and our endurance fuel um, which is like yeah um, it's a really good product uh, even if I wasn't uh, a founder of it I would still love them and we we really have been growing just organically like we we started with nothing we still have nothing <laughs> we're a really small company but um, we're growing and we want to grow in a really like good way we don't want to take too big steps we want to be part of all the decisions and mm -hmm. we want to find the best um, uh, best ingredients and the best solutions of storing and distribution and 
everything and actually on saturday i don't know when this podcast is coming out but on saturday we have some really exciting new products coming out oh, cool cool we'll definitely check it out and also put mm-hmm. the the link to your company in, in the show notes so people can can see your products cool. that's cool <laughs> um so thank you for sharing that um and then uh i think we should maybe touch uh, what I think most people have read um, that also concerns the, the recent announcement that were made by Killian, who has embarked on a new adventure, adventure with the creation of Normal, uh, which is a new outdoor brand with the mission to inspire people, enjoy and respect the nature. So I wanted to ask uh, to you if, you're going to be part of this project, which I definitely think you will. And uh, like, what's your involvement and how you how do you plan to to be involved if you want and can share something about it? I can't share anything about it at the moment, mm-hmm. but um, like the project, uh, it's it's amazing. Like what you've seen also online, it's and um. Like knowing Killian, we we share the same values, and and also I I have followed Killian's like progress, I must say, in his sustainability travel because when we met, maybe he wasn't that in like into it. Like mm-hmm. um, uh, so, it has been really cool seeing seeing how much he cares about it now and really trying to to change things and with the Killian Jornet Foundation and yeah. I'm I'm super proud of him so it's a, it's a super cool project and and at the moment that's all I can say about it <laughs> that's fine of course we will discover uh, <laughs> on our own <laughs> I think yeah uh, related to that it's it's probably always a learning curve and as, as you grow, you understand better what the priority are, priorities are and what you really want to focus on. And I really like the fact that Killian is putting a lot of effort in environmental issues. Uh, I've tried myself to get involved as well. It's, it's super important. And uh, I hope with this new project, uh, it continues on, on this path, which I'm sure of. Thank you. And uh, I wanted to touch one last big topic um, that concerns the the evolution of our sport, trail running. Uh, Of course, you've been in the sport for more than 10 years and the sport has changed dramatically compared to what it used to be back 10 years ago. So how do you see the future of trail running and in particular, what is your opinion on the future of female trail running? Not just, for example, as far as competition, but also in training opportunities and support that women get from sponsors. Yeah, I think it's um, it, it's it has been amazing to see how the sport has been growing, like a uh, everywhere, and and to get more like deep level in both the women and the men and um it can be mostly good i i would say like i think <laughs> i still see like core trail runners and i i feel that i'm i'm really like old school trail runner i love these kind of i love the italian races like I, <laughs> i'm so happy i will i will come to italy this summer to to really feel like home again so uh, for and, and uh, when, dolomites right yeah I, I went to the dolomites and kima, kima and, and maybe yeah one more so I, I really love that kind of races mm-hmm. um uh, so I, I think it will always be maybe two kinds of trail runners um and and i like both like i i think i had planned to run sears and all this year and like try to do a bit more flat running but then it's it's a race in Norway that I really want to do because it's the last year so like um, next year I will run Sears now so I I, it, I I see it's like two different trail runners in a way but um, uh, I'm really happy to see we, that the sport is growing and that it's many more women and it's still 
I don't know if it's like, it, it's, this is also a touchy t- subject, but when I hear women, um, like what they get from a sponsor, uh, and then it's like a man who, who gets three times the, the salary, it's like, it's just so horrible. And, and that women might have like winning everything. And the men might have won one or two races. And I still think that it can be, it is pretty unequal that what athletes, uh, what female athletes get compared to men, um, which is super sad. Um, but it's also, as I said, it's such a, <laughs> a touchy subject. So it's, it's yeah. um, hard to talk about. How do you think we can change it or even start addressing it? I think it's... Uh, I think even talking about it is, is good. And of course, speaking yeah, up when something I think is not it, right. It, I think also from, yeah. from the male side, I, it's a topic that I really care about. And I've, I've also exposed myself on, on this topic. Uh, but if there's something that th- you think people... Yeah, I, I think do. I think just like trying to stand up. Like, I think mm-hmm. I have become more like aware of like my value and that I don't care too much anymore about <laughs> what people think in a way, even though I, of course I do it. But, you know, I... I think standing up and just like asking so yeah. why like why do I get this and why what's the difference because I, I once had like a question what's the difference between me and this one like uh, I have done this and this and this and and then I they like yeah I think it's just to be open about things that's that's a good uh, solution to almost everything in life. Life yeah. just try to be transparent and stand up for it. And I think this goes back to what we were talking about regarding social media and how natural and spontaneous you've been in sharing your own story, which has been super inspiring to many, including me, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, the final question that I would like to ask you uh, is a recommendation. Do you have any book, podcast, or movie that you have watched recently uh, that you want to suggest to your listeners and that have maybe given you a nice percep- perspective on a certain topic or changed your mind about something? Um. <laughs> this <laughs> movies uh, i i don't watch uh, i don't have time for that but <laughs> i did i do listen to podcasts and i mm-hmm. i really like uh, as i said before i'm i'm listening more to like training podcasts but it was um um a podcast um from one of my big idols uh, in sweden she's called underbara clara i i think like the listeners to did po- this podcast probably don't know her at all um like she's not an athlete like she's a she lives on a, a farm and she's she's one of sweden's biggest influencer in a in a good way mm-hmm. um but she's just so clever and she was she she was actually on a podcast um about training that's why i listened to it and she just had so uh yeah like basic things about training how to to get the um continue continuing training and um yeah it was it was about like uh let me think a little bit um what did she say yeah it was like um th- this is mostly to like maybe not at, uh, athletes but to to start training uh, you should think that it's something that you are investing in yourself like not something that you need to do and you shouldn't yeah you should like not be like oh i need to lose five kilos and and yeah you need to see it in another way like i need to take care of myself and i need to and you need to be kind to yourself it's a bit I can't like translate everything that she said but it was just so clever uh maybe I can yeah it was more like being kind to yourself um from from a training perspective and 
I think recently that's the most like in, interesting thing to Hey, Emily. Emily? I don't have anything more there. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I lost you, you for a, I lost you for a few seconds. Yeah. Um, uh, did, all right. Did you, did you get the sentence? I, I I was I was finished. It wasn't that more. I said it wasn't. I haven't been listening to that many interesting things lately. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. We can uh, continue from here. Um, so, like, the podcast was uh, in, in Swedish, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm trying to no, see, no but you know, I I don't have to. Uh, I haven't been watching too many things like the news, but that that's more depressing. Um, yeah. No, that's mostly fine. Swedish Swedish podcasts about training. <laughs> cool. It was just a curiosity. Mm. Thank you. Uh, and I think, yeah, it's, it's this curiosity that you inspire, uh, this simplicity and openness that uh, we've been trying to, to share in this conversation that I hope our listeners will enjoy. So thank you very much for being with us today. And we wish you all the best for your season. I really hope I can meet you in Zagama. I still don't know if my body will cooperate and allow me to run, but uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening today. And until next time, as always, happy trails. <laughs>